The Mort d'Arthur, Chapter 6 How King Arthur Pulled Out the Sword Divers Times Now assay, said Sir Ector unto Sir Kay, and anon he pulled at the sword with all his might, but it would not be. Now shall ye assay, said Sir Ector to Arthur. I will well, said Arthur, and pulled it out easily. And therewithal Sir Ector knelt down to the earth, and Sir Kay. Alas, said Arthur, my own dear father and brother, why kneel ye to me? Nay, nay, my lord Arthur, it is not so. I was never your father, nor of your blood. But I wot well ye are of a higher blood than I weened ye were. And then Sir Ector told him all, how he was betaken him for to nourish him, and by whose commandment, and by Merlin's deliverance. Then Arthur made great dole when he understood that Sir Ector was not his father. Sir, said Ector unto Arthur, will ye be my good and gracious lord when ye are king? Else were I to blame, said Arthur, for ye are the man in the world that I am most beholden to, and my good lady and mother your wife, that as well as her own have fostered me and kept. And if it ever be God's will that I be king, as ye say, Ye shall desire of me what I may do, and I shall not fail you. God forbid I should fail you, sir, said Sir Ector. I will ask no more of you, but that you will make my son, your foster brother, Sir Kay, seneschal of all your lands. That shall be done, said Arthur, and more, by the faith of my body, that never man shall have that office but he, while he and I live. Therewithal they went unto the archbishop, and told him how the sword was achieved, and by whom. And on twelfth day all the barons came thither, and to assay to take the sword, who that would assay. But there afore them all, there might none take it out but Arthur. Wherefore there were many lords wroth, and said it was great shame unto them and all the realm to be overgoverned with a boy of no high blood born. And so they fell out at that time that it was put off till Candlemas, and then all the barons should meet there again. But always the ten knights were ordained to watch the sword day and night. And so they set a pavilion over the stone and the sword, and five always watched. So at Candlemas many more great lords came thither for to have won the sword, but there might none prevail. And right as Arthur did at Christmas, they did at Candlemas, and pulled out the sword easily, whereof the barons were sore aggrieved, and put it off in delay till the high feast of Easter. And as Arthur sped before, so did he at Easter. Yet there were some of the great lords had indignation that Arthur should be king, and put it off in a delay till the feast of Pentecost. Then the Archbishop of Canterbury by Merlin's providence let purvey them of the best knights that they might get, and such knights as Uther Pendragon loved best and most trusted in his days. And such knights were put about Arthur as Sir Bodwin of Britain, Sir Kay, Sir Ulfius, Sir Brastius. All these, with many other, were always about Arthur, day and night, till the Feast of Pentecost. <laughs>